Uh, also at UFC San Antonio was the return of former women's bantamweight champion Holly Holm in the co-main event after a 10-month absence. And she took care of business by winning a clean sweep unanimous decision against Yana Santos. It was a nice win, solid performance, but it was Yana Santos at the end of the day who'd been out for 20 months herself. Now, there aren't many logical options next for Holm, and, and she acknowledged that herself afterwards. And it kind of makes you wonder about her signing a new six-fight contract. But it's basically, at this point, it's basically Juliana Pena or a title fight. So I ask, do you buy Holly Holm reclaiming the women's bantamweight title before she retires? Nolan, it's on you, man. Yeah, I mean, just to, just to start off there with the last question first, uh, for me, I, I still have a tough time seeing Holly Holm hold that title as long as Amanda Nunes is in that division. Um, you know, maybe that's just some sort of... Uh, some sort of bias there in terms of like seeing the person with the belt and seeing how dominant she's been and thinking that she can't lose, even though we've, we've seen it before. But for me, uh, I thought that was a good performance by Holly Holm on Saturday. Um, I don't think it's anything to necessarily uh, you know, it's not going to get people buzzing, so to speak, but it does remind people that she's there and that she is uh, much better than some of the other ranked fighters in this division. And I think right now the women's bantamweight division is, is kind of in a weird place. Um, I think she's certainly valuable in the name recognition and the talent that she brings to a kind of a lackluster picture right now at the top. I mean, even some of these fights that we're talking about, like, is there any fight in this division that people would truly, truly be excited for? Like a lot of these fights, we've seen Amanda fight pretty much everyone. We've seen a lot of the contenders fight each other. I mean, Holly versus Juliana Payne is like kind of the only sort of intriguing fresh matchup that's, that's at the top there. So not really sure where this puts her, but I mean, that's kind of the case with everybody in this division. I don't really, there's nothing totally standout, exciting, you know, prospectively about any of these title fights. So sure. You know, I'm sure the UFC uh, obviously likes to put names in title fights and uh, maybe with another win, she'll be right there. But uh, yeah, I, I would obviously like to see a little bit more from her. I don't think this is going to earn her a shot. And, um, this division's just in a weird place to, to put it quite frank. Yeah, it, it is in a weird place. You know, Holly is 41 years old. Uh, as I mentioned, she uh, is just that was the first fight of a new six fight deal. So she's presumably even if she fought for twice a year for the next, she's presumably going to fight with the UFC until she's 44 or 45 years old. Um, you know, father time catches up to everybody. Um, goes. Do you really think that Holly Holm can actually make a serious run at the UFC women's bantamweight title for a second time? Well, first, I want to acknowledge that, Simon, I know you must be happy to get that first topic out of the way because I know you only focus on the final four. Props to the Aztecs. Props, to, props to the Mountain West. Uh, yeah, look, Holly Holm, she looked amazing that night. The timing, striking, grappling, everything was there for her. You have to wonder how much Santos played into that. And uh, it probably wasn't her best night. And I wouldn't say she's probably top of the division, but Holly Holm did exactly what you would do with that type of opponent, right? So you have to be excited about that. And like Nolan said, you know, she's a former champion. They like her. Those types of fighters are the ones that they kind of can skip a few people. You can plug them in in certain places. So having a new contract and, and being in that situation, I think, is good for Holly Holm. I think she can get back to the title, but it's just hard to uh, erase the memories, right? Like you look at somebody like Amanda Nunes and she's practically bulletproof. She finally showed that she can lose, but what did she do when she bounced back, right? Like she proved to us again that she still got it. And as long as she's at the top, that makes things really difficult. It makes things difficult for the entire division. This is a division that used to pop guys. It used to be one of the stronger divisions. We were all happy about all the matchups. Now everything's kind of in limbo. It's, it's, it's not the most sexy uh, division that's out there like they they really need to figure this out a little bit because amanda nunez is at the top she's reigning and, and i don't really know that uh holly home can can do something to dethrone her she has that skill set where yes um she can defeat just about anyone in the right situation but you're asking a lot and especially at her age you have to remember a lot of people look at her as the ufc fighter there's a lot of wear and tear from boxing she's been doing this a very very long time so who knows from fight to fight, what she's going to look like every fight. But I have to say that this last performance made me pretty excited to see her again. Um, but I just don't know if she can take the championship. Yeah. All right, Mike, let's, let's round it out to you. You buying or selling Holly Holm? 
selling for sure. I mean, I, I'm buying her potentially getting in another title fight before her career is over. I think that's very possible just given the landscape of the division and her name value and stuff. But as long as Amanda Nunes is there, I think that's a really tough ask for her. Her best chance might actually just be to like outlast Amanda Nunes in terms of longevity because, well, Holly's, I think, probably going to fulfill the six fight contract with this being the first. Can anyone say that we're going to get five, six more fights out of Amanda Nunes? I'm not nearly as confident in that. I don't know what her plans are. She doesn't do much media. She hasn't really talked to us. Um, she did say like around the last fight that now that her daughter is getting a bit older and her and Nina Nunes are planning on having another child, she kind of wants to like compete long enough that her children are aware of what she's doing and can like acknowledge the greatness. So maybe we do get more years out of Amanda Nunes now than we thought we were going to. And maybe that, you know, puts a roadblock in Holly Holmes' way. But if she's gone, I think she can beat anyone else in that division. I mean, Raquel Pennington is ahead of her, and she's beat her twice. I don't want to see that third fight again. They've been absolutely horrible, both those fights. I don't want to see them do that again. But, like, we know where she stands skill set-wise. I think she could beat Juliana Pena. She could beat Irene Aldana, Ketlin Vieira. Like, these people she is still very competitive with. So I give her a good chance there. It's just that one Amanda Nunes roadblock that's in her way right now. So uh, I do think Holly Holm will be able to get another title shot. It's just, it's a tough sell to have her win that one because we saw what happened the last time against Amanda Nunes. She finished her in the first round with her own signature move. So like, it doesn't get much more difficult than that. Yeah. Um, shout out here to uh, Mulatto Vanguard in the chat, who is definitely team home. Uh, he says, I'm not counting Holly out of anything. She's a former champion and still proves herself daily. So uh, Holly's got Mulatto Vanguard uh, clearly in her corner. Um, I want to talk a little bit real quick, guys, about the state of this division in general, because Nolan, you touched on this a little bit. So I'll go to you here. You said it's a weird place in the division, but it seems like bant women's bantamweight has been in a weird place in the division. And if I can be more specific, it's a division that seems to have lacked an up and coming fighter. Like we've seen in other divisions across the UFC, like in, in, in women's in the women's flyweight division and the strawweight division, like the UFC has been really good making stars and making up and coming fighters and like identifying up and coming fighters who have become something in those two women's divisions. It's these upper divisions that have been tough. And women's bantamweight, obviously, for a long time, was like the, the gold standard in women's MMA. But in the UFC, it's fallen off. We don't have a Hamzat Chemaev. We don't have a Shavkat Rachmanov. We don't have any equivalents of those guys. No Bo Nickel. Nobody that's like an equivalent of like, whoa, we want to watch that fighter in this division. Even as you look at the top 10, top 15 in the rankings. Why, why is that? What, what do you think is weird about this division? Yeah, I don't know. It's it is really really strange though, and you know, I think obviously when this the bantamweight got put in, it was for one reason, and that was Ronda Rousey. And with her absence, uh, we've really seen that. In the addition of the one twenty five, one fifteen, we've seen where the talent really fits in. So I kind of equate this to like the light heavyweight division of like the men's like of a few years ago when it was just kind of like John and everybody yeah. else. And so, I mean, yeah, you look at the rankings right now, I believe Joe Cian Nunez is like 14 and Chelsea Chandler's 15. And I think Chelsea's had either one or two fights in the UFC. Like, so there's, there's just no depth really at all. And then if you look at the rest of the names, there are people that have either kind of had a one win, one loss, one win, one loss, or like the names that we were been talking about this whole time, like Raquel Pennington, Holly Holm, just the same group of fighters that have essentially been there for like the entire time that this division has existed. So I, I don't know what they're going to have to do. I know, um, women's MMA, like as as far as it's come, and we've seen the evolution in the skills, and it just improved so much over the past couple of years. I still think the talent pool is not nearly as close to you know as 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 the men's are. Like when Sean Shelby and Mick Maynard go out to sign a lightweight prospect, they have like you know dozens of guys that they could theoretically sign to put in any sort of slot. With bantamweight, you're lucky if you women's bantamweight, you're lucky if you find a fighter that's got you know four wins in a row or something. So right. it is really a difficult problem. I'm not sure what they're going to have to what they're going to be able to do to solve it, but it definitely definitely needs some sort of uh, some sort of catalyst to get things going here and get the get fresh faces in there and, and start challenging some of these contenders that have just hung out in those ranking spots for years now. Yeah, it's just one of those things because, I mean, we already, like, the UFC basically has given up on women's featherweight, and it's just bantamweight. They're just struggling to get somebody going. Um, maybe somebody like an Irene Aldana can can emerge, but even she's 35 at this point, you know, it would be kind of like a last run for her. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens with that division, but I just wanted to throw that out there. So.